I've just created a standing wave. Another standing wave. Standing waves are distinct from progressive waves. And we find them in lots of musical instruments. In fact, probably all musical instruments. And what I'd like to do in this video is to show you how standing waves are produced. And they're produced as a result of the law of superposition of waves. Let's have a look using a wave simulator. Well, here we are at our simulator. And what you can see at the moment is a progressive wave. This is a, a normal wave, if you like. Uh, it's moving, as you can see, to the left. Now, if I create another wave by turning the blue wave on, we've got a blue wave traveling now to the right. The thing about these two waves is that they are identical in all ways. In other words, the amplitude is the same and the frequency is the same, which of course means the velocity is the same. The only thing that is different about the two is that they are traveling in the opposite direction. Now this or these are the conditions that we need to create standing waves. Two identical trained trains of waves, two identical wave trains, traveling in the same medium at the same time in the opposite direction. Those are the conditions that will produce a standing wave. Now, the standing wave is produced as a result, as I said, of the law of superposition of waves. Now, I'm going to just hold the waves at a certain point, and we'll see how that works out. So here I have just stopped the wave and I want you to have a look at the displacement now of the blue wave and the orange wave. Those displacements there are equal. So if we add this upward displacement to this downward displacement, then we get a displacement of zero. Now, <clears throat> this looks to be much the same all the way along here. Now, I'll progress this wave a little further. And let's just have a look at what's happening here. Here you can see that we have what we normally call constructive interference. So we've got the displacement from the blue wave. If we add that to the displacement of the orange wave, then we get a displacement which is a roundabout up here. Now I'm going to show you the resultant wave. There it is there. So the displacement here is the sum of the displacement of the blue and the orange wave. Again, if we go anywhere over here, if we add the displacement of the orange to the blue, we get the overall displacement at that particular point. Going back here to the start, we've got an upward displacement of the blue wave, a downward displacement of the orange wave. Add those together, we've got zero displacement. I'll progress this wave now a little further and stop it if I can just about there. Now, at this stage, you can see that the displacement here, upward displacement, compared with the downward displacement, is about equal. And so we have zero displacement. We have zero displacement pretty well all along here because the upward displacement is equal to the downward displacement. To progress the wave a little further and pause. Perhaps in slow motion. Uh, again, now we have zero displacement here, but we have maximum or fairly close to maximum displacement here. So this is what is called 
add a standing wave. It's the resultant of the sum of the displacement of these two waves. We can change particular characteristics of this wave. Uh, we can, uh, for example, increase the speed. We can increase the frequency. I'll just try increasing the frequency. So again, we'll start this. And as you can see, we've got another standing wave. I'll just try and adjust this frequency a little further. I'll try and slow it down a little bit so that we've got fairly close now to one whole wavelength fitting into uh, the screen here. And that, when we've got one whole wavelength here of a standing wave, uh, that gives us the wavelength of this wave. If I increase the frequency, I can probably fit in another standing wave. Now that's fairly close to uh, another standing wave. Now this particular wave would be what we call the third harmonic. We've already seen the first two harmonics. That is when we had just the half wave showing. Then when I change the wavelength again, we found we'll change the frequency, same idea. Then we have a whole wavelength. Now, as you can see, we have one and a half wavelengths. That is referred to as the third harmonic. We also notice these positions here where we have zero displacement. They're called nodes. So this is a node here, position of zero displacement. Here is another node. Again, a third node, a fourth node. In the middle here, where we have maximum displacement, we call that a anti-node. So here we have an anti-node, another anti-node. I can increase the frequency again and hopefully get another standing wave fitting into this particular length. That looks like it. So again now what we've got is one, two, this time we've got two and two and a half wavelengths fitting in. So this is what uh, standing waves are. Standing waves are produced when we have two identical wave trains traveling in the opposite direction in the same medium at the same time. As I said, they're the kind of waves that occur quite frequently in musical instruments. Here's the position of maximum displacement. And if I have a look somewhere along here, I should be able to find a node so a node would be position where there is no displacement. And looks that looks to be fairly close to around here somewhere. Uh, maximum displacement again somewhere here. I might just slow this down to see if we can get that a little bit better. No, perhaps not. So somewhere here would be a position of no displacement, here position of maximum displacement, maximum displacement, minimum displacement, node. So these, so this is how we can get different frequencies produced in strings, springs and musical instruments or pipes. For example, trumpets, bass players and the like.